the teachings of the first service are always harder than the second. I preach bone in the first service and milk in the second service. Now, in, on our training, securing your future, you know, we were looking at what David was always at the center of God's will. You know, that's what we've been treating since. And uh, we said to be in the center of God's will, you must understand his perfect will. Now, understanding his perfect will, today I'll be speaking on understanding the voice of the Holy Spirit. Understanding the voice of... Understanding the voice of the Holy Spirit. Now, one of the people, one of the reasons why so many Christians today cannot enter into God's plan for their life is because they do not understand the voice of the Holy Spirit. Now, listen to this. I will share some things with you. I pray that time will permit. I, I read this story last night of how a Christian almost lost his life. Not even a Christian, a pastor almost lost his life. He said they finished from church service, so he was going home. Then he wanted to board the taxi. The pastor is in Ghana. As he wanted to board the taxi, uh, he called the called taxi and the taxi man passed. He said, why did the taxi man pass? He had to insist in the spirit. You know, he didn't have this urge to want to attend or continue with the taxi. So he just said that, ah, there's nothing now. You know, and uh, he boarded the taxi. As he was going, as he was going, he said, the taxi man now played a song. He was playing a hymn that they used for burial service, for, for burial service. He said, while they were playing the hymn, he, now, he was still no longer comfortable. What is going on? He said, the taxi man just said to him, today is your final day or not? And they branched to a, uh, to a cemetery. He said he was afraid. As they got to the cemetery, some people came out. They tied him. They wanted to slaughter him for ritual. He said, they now ask him a question. Will you join our court? If you join our court, we will spare you. But if not, we will use you for ritual now. He said, he said, I will join your court. So they put him in the taxi. They said, okay, since you will join, we will go and get somebody else that will use his blood. As they dropped him, he said, he got to a marketplace. He said, ah, okay, I've gotten close to my house. They gave him the contact of where they'll be doing their meetings. He said, as he got down, he said, I will not join your group. <laughs> they wanted to chase him, but people were there. He ran. Now, he now said, if he had obeyed that uh, um, inner unrest, he wouldn't have had that experience at all. So, so many children of God today, one of the reasons why they, they enter into trouble and they, don't, they, don't, they are never in the center of God's will is because they have not developed the ability to understand the speaking of the Holy Spirit. Let's start with 2 Kings. I know somebody will be saying, ah, 2 Kings, okay. what are we going to look for the Holy Spirit in the 2 Kings? I just want us to learn a lesson. 2 Kings. 2 Kings. Are you there? Chapter 5. Let's start taking it from verse uh, um, 17. From verse 17. I read, And Naaman said, Shall there not then, I pray thee, be given to thy servant two morals burden of earth, for thy servant will henceforth offer neither burnt offering nor sacrifice unto any other God, but to the Lord, but unto the Lord. 18. In this thing, the Lord pardon thy servant, that when my master goeth into the house of Rimon to worship there, and he leaned on my hand, and I bow myself in the house of Rimon. When I bow down myself in the house of Rimon, the Lord pardon thy servant in this thing. 19. And he said unto him, Go in peace. So he departed a little way. He departed from him a little way. Now, what happened here? Yeah, I will still read on. Gehazi, I'm sorry, uh, Naaman was healed miraculously under the instruction of prophet Elijah. Remember that story now? That leprous man. Go take your bath. He went to take his bath and he was healed. Naaman, uh, Naaman now came back with gifts. Man of God, sir, this gift is for you. Man of God, sir, this gift is for you. Elisha said, no, I am not to take anything from you. Do you know why Elisha said no? 
he saw it spiritually that the gift of Naaman and the leprosy of Naaman were connected together. Nobody saw it physically. But uh, 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 Elisha was able to see it spiritually. You know, I remember when uh, this former transporter uh, was alive, Fe Fele, he was very, very sick. And uh, I sent one of our ministers to go and pray for him. He lives close to our house. Now, as they got there, he said, they, they said, he said, you are men of God? You came to pray for me? He said, yes. So they, he brought them inside the house. He was seriously sick. Now, the man I sent to go and pray for him said, he said, men of God, he brought him in the inner part of the room. Okay, you were there. He said, and he started trying to offer him money. Said, ah, who? Now, this man of God, this man said, as Fele was talking about the money, that pastor, he was tempted. He was ready to give them anything for him to be healed. Anything for them to be healed. He said, as he was talking about the money, he was having that temptation. You know what God reminded him? He said, God reminded him, Geazi, that if you collect his money, you will collect his problem. I didn't say, Abi, you won't collect. <laughs> if you collect his money, you collect his problem. So he said, he just left him and told him that, okay, he will fix a prayer for me to come and pray for him. The next day, he went there to tell him the dates that I gave. Okay, I'll meet at so and so date. The bodyguard did not allow him to enter again. Before we knew it, we had that he was dead. So at times, see, some physical things you see have spiritual connections. That's why I always tell young ladies too, a man is proposing to you and quickly, he, has trans he said, let me transfer some money into your account. Be careful. It is not every gift that you see that is natural, that is actually natural. Some gifts have what we call spiritual connections. Now look at this. Let's read from verse 20. But Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, the man of God said, Behold, my master had speared Naaman, this Syrian, is not this, uh, sorry, in not receiving at his hand that which he brought. But as the Lord liveth, I will run after him and take somewhat of him. So Gehazi followed after Naaman. And when Naaman saw him running after him, he lighted down from the, the chariot to meet him and said, Is all well? And he said, All is well. My master had sent me, saying, Behold, even now they, they have become to me from Mount Ephraim two young men of the sons of the prophets. Give them, I pray thee, a talent of silver, that's a bag of silver, and two chains of garments, that's two uh, 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 will I say, when I say, when he says chains, two different package, bags full of different kind of garments, two. And Naaman said, be content. Take two talents. You ask for one bag, I'll give you two bags. And he hushed him and bowed two talents of silver in two bags with two chains of garments and laid them upon two of his servants and they bear them before him. And when he came to the Thor, he took them from the hand and bestowed them in the house. And let the men go. And they departed. But he went in and stood before his master. And Elisha said unto him. Whence cometh thou Gehazi? And he said. Thy servant went no whither. And he said unto him. Went not my heart with thee. My heart went with you now. When you were going. When the man thought again from the chariot to meet thee. Is it a time to receive money? And a time to receive garment? And olive and vineyards? And sheep and oxen? A men servant, a maid servant. Look at 27. The leprosy of Naaman shall cleave unto thee. It was not the cause of, of uh, Elisha. It was the connection. The connection, the gift of Naaman had that spiritual connection with the problem of Naaman. That's why I see, if you don't understand how the Holy Spirit speaks this end time, you can't escape from falling off. You can't escape. This is the time that people, you see them walking with their leg like this, facing you. They are actually walking with their, with their head. And you see them physically, I said, looking ring. But actually, they are walking with their head. Their head is on the floor. Except God open your eyes. That's why you need to be conscious of how the Holy Spirit speaks. 
People are, are being kidnapped every day in Nigeria. People are being killed every day in Nigeria. Terrible things are happening in places where people least expect in Nigeria of now. So if there's a better time, now is the time to depend on the leading of the Holy Spirit. But let's now understand, how can we understand the voice of the Holy Spirit? Let's go to John chapter 16, from verse 12 to 15. John chapter 16, from verse 12 to 15. Thank you, those of you on helping me behind the camera. I have, look at it, I have yet many things to say unto you. Jesus is the one speaking of but you cannot bear them now. Which means if I tell you now, you don't have the maturity to carry them. Yes, move on. Verse 13. How be it? When he, the spirit of truth, that's the Holy Spirit, is come, he will guide you into all truth. He shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he shall show you things to come. Verse 14. We stop at 15. We now come back to that 13. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. 15. 15. He, and all things, sorry, all things that the, that, that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I, he shall take of mine and shall show it unto thee. But go back to verse 13. How do you recognize the voice of the Holy Spirit? I wrote here, one of the cardinal duties of the Holy Spirit is to transmit God's mind to you. Now, what is the major assignment of the Holy Spirit? Can share a mimimo? He share a nipe, lati mu or kan lorun, lati so kan lorun funwa. Now, he is to transmit the mind of God to you. And that one should show us, teach us a lesson. What is that lesson that it should teach us? It should teach us here, look up church, that the Holy Spirit will not give you a message that contradicts the written word of God. If he, the Bible says, Jesus is saying here, he, he, he will not tell you anything by his own self. Anything he's going to tell you is what the Father has shown him that he will tell you. Hello? So which means that if the Holy Spirit does not have a new message of his own, if the Holy Spirit cannot give you anything new, it means that the Holy Spirit will not give you a message that contradicts the Bible. The Bible is God's written word. Now, and when you say God's written word, it is the baseline that we can use to balance all things. What do we use to balance things in Nigeria? The constitution. Abisa, you are a retired police officer. Yes, it's the constitution. Now, if the lawyers want to go to court, they don't go to court to quote Bible. What do they go to? They go to defend their client standing upon what? The constitutions. That's why a lawyer will tell you that if you say, yes, they caught you silly, you say, don't worry. When we get to the technical areas of the law, we'll know how to bring you out. Lawyers will tell technicalities. They know that their client is at fault, too, but they win cases when they come to the issue of being technical. I don't used to forget our experience now. How they were asking us, they were asking me questions when that uh, agent came to break into the church. The, the lawyer asked me a question. He said, is, is that the reason why there was fracas in the church? I said there was no fracas in the church. Now, and you know what fracas is? Is that the reason why there is fight? He was looking for a way to twist to get something. He asked me several questions. He couldn't get anything from me. He now went back to the sheet, the church sheet, that the police officer that brought the case to the court wrote. It was there. He, he read it and he laughed. Ah, when he laughed, I was touched. He now said, I will be submitting my no case. Submit. He demanded from the uh, magistrate that I have a no case submission file to submit by the next hearing, sir. And they asked the second, like, Go ahead. I don't have any further question, but I have a submission. And what's that? So what does that mean? No case that my client does not have a case to answer here. And when he came up, he came up with a constitution. He brought it out. He said, from the Nigerian constitution, he quoted the law book act, you know, and said, a person can break into a place lawfully. And a person can break into a place unlawfully. He said, yes, my, my client was charged that he, he broke into God's five evangelical mission property on so-so and so date. But it was not indicated whether it was a lawful breaking, and break, breaking in or an unlawful one. 
And since it was not indicated, it was only said that my client broke into the property. Well, it didn't, it, the, the charge, she didn't say whether it was legally or illegally. Sir, he told the magistrate, we have no case here. Then what are we discussing? There's nothing ba- that binds my client. He won't know. How do you know the voice of the Holy Spirit? The Spirit of God will never tell you anything that contradicts the Bible. And I know what will be causing your mind is, Pastor, then why is it that people are now falling? Why is it that people are now falling? You say, our Holy Spirit said, people fall today because they don't know the Bible. If you know the Bible very well, hear me, the voices you are hearing that is deceiving you will not succeed to deceive you. Ah, Have you forgotten? There was a time now, I taught our church members on how to hear the voice of God. One of our daughters, I just met her on the road. She was going, ah, sister, how are you? Fine. He said, fine. How is your hair scattered like this? He said, the voice of the Holy Spirit said to me that I shouldn't comb my hair. I shouldn't do anything about my hair. I shouldn't take my bath. Ah, this one on the hair rubbish. show. But she was actually hearing a voice. I now show that from scriptures. Where the Bible says a woman's hair is her glory. If something is your glory, you will take, it, take care of it now. Ah. I took her to my office. Please, sit down. The voice you are hearing is not the voice of the Holy Spirit. How will somebody, a man of God, now come to you now and tell you that the Holy Spirit is saying, move out of your husband's house. When the Bible says what, to, what, what, what God has joined together, let no man put us under. And you are saying the Holy Spirit say. You hear some young ladies, I had some online, they were sharing testimonies, please deliver me from my pastor. Imagine you come to church, the pastor already has his own wife, and the pastor is telling you that the Holy Spirit said to him that you are his wife. One even got pregnant for the pastor. The pastor took her for abortion. You know, the problem we have this end time is not the problem of fake pastors. It's the problem of lazy Christians. Christians who are not ready to be committed to what? The Bible. Because the Bible is the baseline. You had Jesus, what he said. He said, he will take from what is mine. The Holy Spirit doesn't have something, anything new, apart from what God is saying. He does not have his own agenda. That's why he's the Spirit of God. Shall I hear now? The Holy Spirit does not have his own agenda here. It is the agenda of God, the purpose of God he is coming to communicate. Hallelujah. I wrote here so that we can go deeper. Forget, sorry, don't forget that he does not have anything of himself to tell you. Apart from what the Father says, it means if the message contradicts the written word of God, it is not from God. It is clear from this that the devil will find it easy to make hungry, ignorant believers to fall cheaply. Yes, that you are hungry for more of God does not mean that you can't fall. I know of so many innocent believers. I had the case of one. If I remember the story very well, I'll tell you. Innocent sister joined the church, was willing to serve God, and the pastor capitalized on her ignorance. The lady wanted to serve God, and the pastor said, God is saying that you are going to be my wife. And she agreed. I always tell people, God is not an author of confusion. Hear me very well. If God is saying to brother Kunle that sister Rachel is his wife, the same God is also willing to speak to sister Rachel. Sister Rachel should not, because of this, let the, the ranking of Brother Kunle decide that our Brother Kunle cannot be lying now. God is not a lot of confusion. He will never conf- contradict his written word. That's why every Christian, go and be committed to Bible study. When you are committed to your Bible, it will be difficult for the devil to deceive you. Shall I hear? And you know, one of the reasons why I pity this generation is because, you know why I pity this generation is because 
churches are fixing programs that will not allow people to have personal time with God. Do you know there are some churches they have daily manner, uh, 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 daily uh, daily kinikon with Jesus. They meet with they meet in church every day. There are big big churches that do it every morning prayer every day. So when people wake up every day in the morning, they go to church, spend time, they will pray. That is not personal time with God. You will only hear what the pastor has to tell you that day. In our days, they will tell us, after service, go have a time. We will do morning devotion. Quiet time. You will do your quiet time. And by the time you are out, you have a personal message from the word of God. How many Christians do it today? That's why you are always looking for prophets and prophetess that will prophesy. Praise God. I know somebody is angry. So the Holy Spirit will never contradict the Bible. Never. Because if it contradicts the Bible, it has gone against what Jesus told us now. You know those men of God, they know more than us. They know more than us. They, they, are, they are saying, ah. They are saying, they are saying, this is what they Imagine, somebody comes into us and the Holy Spirit said, I had one pastor like that. He's a pastor friend. A woman's uh, 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 son sent a car to her, a very powerful jeep. And the pastor was invited to come and bless the jeep. And the pastor said to the woman, God said, that this jeep is your coffin. That you should sow it to a man of God. A man of God you respect. He ended up going home with that jeep. Do you mind? Hey, carry coffin away. Oh. Carry coffin away. Oh. That man of God, as at the last time I saw him, that was the jeep he was using. I always tell pastors, you don't need to lie to use jeep. God has given me two. I didn't lie to get it. Yeah, let's go deeper now. Number two. So don't forget what's number one. One of the greatest duties of the Holy Spirit is what? Is to transmit God's mind to you. Now, point number two. The Holy Spirit chooses how he speaks to us. The Holy Spirit chooses how he speaks to us. And he chooses it based on our level and ability to understand him. The Holy Spirit chooses how he speaks to us. The more you grow, now, and I, I group it into two. There's the usual way. That's the foundational way. We are going to look at the usual way now. The usual way. There's what we call the spectacular way. That's the second one. But we get, when we get there, I will, I will tell you. Let's start with the first one. The usual way. Every Christian. This is how the Holy Spirit starts. Acts chapter 27. Acts 27 from verse 4, 9 to 14. Acts 27. 9 to 14. Acts 27. 9 to 14. Now. When... When much time was spent and when sailing was now dangerous because the fast was now already past, past, Paul admonished, yes, and said unto them, Sirs, I perceive, look at this screen, I perceive that this voyage will be well, sorry, will be with hot and much damage, not only for the leading and the sheep, but also for our lives. Wait for me here. Did Paul say, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me? What did he say? I perceive. Now, to perceive, what does it mean to perceive? Most Christians, huh? I said, yeah, I love that statement. I sense. I sense. He didn't hear anything. He didn't see any vision. That's the foundational way the Holy Spirit speaks. When you are just coming up. Now, it could be a feeling of danger or a feeling of peace. At, I wrote in my notes, you can call it an inner knowing. Not that anybody told you something, but 
are you little more? You're just, you're, there's this sense, you are sensing that something is wrong. But most people don't pay attention. That was, on the, let's read on, let's read on. So you see the end of the result. Next verse, we'll stop at 14. Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and the owner of the ship, instead of Paul, more than those things which were spoken by Paul. Next verse. And because the heaven, the heaven was not uh, commodious to winter, in, in, uh, in winter, in, the more part advised to depart thence. Let's go, leave that man. If by any means they might obtain to uh, fairness, and there was, and there, and, sorry, and there to winter, which is at an event of Crete, and light towards the southwest and the northwest. Move on, thirteen. And when the south wind blew soft, sorry, and when the south wind blew softly, yeah, you we have not yet true. Come back, come back. So, softly, softly. Supposing that they had obtained their purpose, they were happy. They have obtained their purpose. Losing tense, they sailed close to Crete. 14. But not long after, there arose what? Against it, a tempestuous wind called Aeroclodion. A terrible wind started blowing. But how did it all start? Paul said, I perceive. Today's Christian, they don't teach us this once again. I don't know what, so many churches have missed it. But let's leave them, let's face our own. The Holy Spirit is our greatest counselor. And how does he start his discussion with us? He starts with this. I wrote here. According to this scripture, uh, you can also call it a knowing, a perception. Paul was not a sailor. He just knew in his mind that something will go wrong. It was not a natural perception. Because, the natu uh, uh, because in the natural, everything seemed very, very well. Everything seemed very balanced. Because when you are talking about this sensing, physically nothing will show sign. But you just sense that something is wrong. I remember when, uh, many years ago, one of my daughters, she lived in my house. Their marriage crashed last, was it two, now, last year. When she brought this brother to me, uh, Papa, uh, this brother, I just told them, I don't know. I don't know. But I don't, I'm not comfortable. My wife can't testify. I'm not comfortable with this. Ah, sir, they Till they did wedding, they kept asking me, what did you do? I said, I didn't see anything. But I just noticed, I noticed that this thing is wrong. I just, I just have this feeling that this is not right. Ah. Over this matter, do you know that the church almost divide? And does he want to marry her? And people say so many terrible things against me, the aunt sister got angry. They left, our, they left my house. They went to do their marriage outside. When their first child died after the marriage, they called me to come and resurrect the child up because they know they were there when God used me to raise a dead person. And me, my simplicity, so I'm changing that simplicity now. As they called me, I went there straight. I went to carry the dead boy. I put him on my chest. I prayed and prayed and prayed. And God said, son, this is a product of sin. I can't answer your prayers. So I told them, go and bury it. God said, this is a product of sin. She was, she was pregnant outside wedlock. So they came and joined the church. When the marriage crashed last year, they have three children. I told the man, but I told you that time. Though you were not our member, you joined us from Regine. That something is wrong. He said, but sir, I was asking you what you see, what you saw. I said, I didn't see anything. But I just had this feeling. I didn't have this rest in my mind about this relationship. I said, now look at. There's this inner knowing. Inner unrest or inner peace. Some of you, you just ignore it. 
You want to sign a, a, a business partnership with somebody, you don't have this rest. You want to buy this particular product or property, you don't have this rest. And you say, ah, it's cheap. Ah, and this thing is good. It's the Holy Spirit that is speaking. Paul did not, he was not a sailor. He was a preacher. But he said, I perceive. And do you know that the, the ship eventually crashed? We'll still get there. And they don't use crash for ship. It capsized. Are you learning? So let's go back. God did not say anything in his ears. But in his heart, he sensed danger. And I wrote here, when you want to take a decision, watch for the quiet assurance in your heart. Watch for the quiet assurance. I also bracket it, relaxed knowing. It could be on either you want to make a choice on who to marry, partners in business, you know. Watch it. And watch it very well. That's the beginning of how the Holy Spirit speaks to us believers. In our unrest, or at times, when this is the God's will, you will just notice that this peace. And what if I call see any? Peace of mind. But we say, ah, 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 my mom, but boy, I just don't know. I just have this peace of mind. And eventually it works. And so we say, ah, but boy, a genial, a mama, be real. And at times, everything may look so right. And I don't know. Ah. But everything is right now. Everything is, right now. everything is balanced now. Look, everything is okay. I just don't know. I just don't know. It has happened to me several times. Now listen, quickly, quickly, quickly. You rush this one because of time. When the Holy Spirit speaks to you like this, these are the four things you will notice. The four things you will notice. One, there will be an impression of peace or worry. There will be an impression of peace or worry in your heart. An impression of peace or worry. Two, the conviction will be so strong. The, there will be this strong conviction. He said, to come and fade the way just like that. That you, something will be so strong in your heart. Fake learning, he said. And in fake learning, he said, it has happened to me several times. Three, it will be repetitive, which means it will continue to repeat. Four, it will be an unexplainable knowing. You can't explain, but you just know. Even when they ask you, ex ex explain why you are saying no. You yourself cannot explain. And he said, if I walk with me, they went, you know what, the one they did last, that um, pissed me off. They now brought some brothers from Redeem, about five of them, to come and see me. That our brother said he saw a sister in your church. And you are saying no to this relationship. So, tell us why. I said, I don't know. I didn't see anything. But I just felt Look at the sister is our member. I just felt that this brother is making a mistake. That he will regret. I didn't say she. He will regret the decision he's making right now. I didn't even speak for the sister that is our member. When that brother married that sister, he was human resource manager eh, in the company. British American uh, British American Tobacco Company. The lady was a tea server. The moment the company discovered that, I uh, know two of you cannot be, it was him, the sack. 
then he was moving from one problem to another problem. Let's leave the rest for another time. Number two. We are through with it. Look at the second way. Now, this, I put the second one under the spectacular. Let's go to that same Acts 27. 21 to 25. Acts 27, 21 to 25. But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sir, Sirs, you should have hearkened unto me and not have loosed from Crete and have gained this harm and loss. 22. And now I exhort you to be of good cheers, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the sheep. The sheep will be lost, nobody will die. Verse 23. For there stood by me this night, what? The angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve. Can you see? Now, this one is under the spectacular. Now, what are those ways that are under the spectacular? Vision, dream, trance, audible voice. Because somebody will sit like this and he will hear the Holy Spirit say to him, Femi, Father, who spoke to me? A be spectacular. Loa. Elomi alala, ada big batu yeke, ah ah. When you get to this point, it means that you are, you are growing spiritually. So the Holy Spirit is now deciding to change the ways to speak with you. Can you see? The Holy Spirit now said to Paul, he said, he, he revealed, he, an angel was about to me and told me that nobody would die. If you read through, when you get to one, read through, the sheep capsized. It was destroyed. But not a single soul was lost. I don't see it. The second one is rated under spectacular way of hearing God. This one, too, comes by the choice of the Holy Spirit. Not everybody has this one, too. Under the spectacular, we have dream, trance, vision, audible voice, and prophecies. Now, look up quickly. Let me tell you this story. I made one very terrible mistake. Terrible mistake many years ago. And what was the mistake? There was this woman that used to come and see me for counseling. She now brought all her children to me. I love the woman so much. I respect her children. But there's one of her daughter. She has the stature of her post wife. Very troublesome girl. But this woman, this lady, very gifted with dream. You are laughing. Maybe you are troublesome too. <laughs> her dream was always accurate. So this day, they came and all of them were making jests. Uh, 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 pastor, he says you got a dream. And I said, what is the dream? He said, Pastor, I saw that my mother was pregnant. Uh -uh. And she was the last one. The last one too, we are praying for us at that time to have somebody that will be engaged to so that she can marry. So you know that the woman is a very aged woman. The woman is a grandma. But because of her character, eh, and the way they used to report her to me that she's so troublesome. She's a parent, but she nags so much. If her husband, uh, her, her brother brings girlfriend home, she'll fight the girlfriend. So the brother will now be saying, don't you want me to get married? So when she now told me that my, I saw my mommy became pregnant, I, just, I didn't even count it to be anything. Not knowing that it was cancer that was coming, that God showed her. I didn't know that God made her the watchman of the family. If I had known, if it had been because the first daughter, very spiritual, ah, one thing about better prayer, the twelve or eh, only my party prayer, the six are up. In your ring, can can't can ring, can can't tear. God does not judge spirituality by activity. Yeah, this girl, if you make up, finish. You won't. But I didn't know. I didn't count it. So she was, anytime she said, I've been getting this dream that has been, I didn't count it to be anything. I'll just pray for the mom. You can go. Until one day, 
The mom was sick. She came here. Her stomach was swollen. I still didn't pay attention to it. And I told her to go and see a doctor. When she came back from the hospital, the doctor didn't tell her what she saw. I took the, the medical report. They used medical terms. So I took my phone. I googled on it. And I saw that it was cancer of the liver that does not have a medical cure. Ah. I couldn't tell the son. The son believes in me so much. I couldn't tell the son. Because as at that time, there was no medical a solution again. I just disappeared straight. You know why I disappeared? I disappeared because I was feeling bad that I didn't take that girl's dream serious because I judged her because of the way she appears. It is the Holy Spirit that chooses the spectacular. Are you hearing me, church? That's why if you are having spectacular message, the thing you can lose it too. Cherish it very well. And it's all on Martin Basso in that spectacular way. God has been doing it in the spectacular way. Woman, woman, son, you know. Then, my body, oh, 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 Jaramo, my son, come met at you, so she could go to my Jaramo. Then, my body, oh, Jaramo, I can stop. But the Holy Spirit see that you are no longer taking it serious, he will just stop. And see, I always tell people, spiritual gift that is lost eh, is always very difficult to gain back. I always share with my daughter, you are gifted. God has called you with songs, with this. That's my first one. Don't lose it. Oh. If it is lost, it is gone. Praise the Lord. Let's round off because of time. I wrote I, their experience. Yeah. Do you know that that woman eventually died? Throughout all her sick days, I couldn't show my face. Because the family was looking at me as the pastor of the mom. But I made a terrible mistake. God rebuked me for it. But told me to move on. Because mechanics, for them to know how to repair a car, it is car they will spoil. Doctors, for them to know how to treat people, it is people they will injure. And some even cause loss of life. I remember my doctor friend was sharing with me how a woman died in his presence. He said he was telling the nurses, this woman that is crying, attend to her. If you look at all the signs, her womb is torn. This crying, attend to her now. She will lose her life. He said the nurse was saying, no, 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 no. She's just faking it. It's labor that is affecting her. Doctor said in their presence, the woman collapsed. Because she, she was bleeding inside, nobody knew. I learned my lessons. From that day, even when a small baby gets any spectacular message, I listen. Okay, tell me your dream. Tell me the vision. Because if I had taken it serious that time that lady was getting that dream, I would have told the mom, I would have asked her some questions. It was later I discovered she had fibroid because she was running away from operation. The fibroid grew and it became something else. Praise the Lord. Can we quickly go on? Hello? Now listen, if you notice you have spectacular way of hearing God, create more time for these three things. How many? Three. Number one, create more time to study the Bible more. I also have a spe this spectacular way. I, my dreams are very, very accurate. Create more time to study the Bible more. Because the higher you go in the knowledge of the word, the more mysteries God will want to show you. Number two. Create more time to pray more.
more time. I always tell people, pray, prayer is like you, eh? Fanning the coal. Always be spending more time in the place of prayer. Place of prayer. I'm not saying they say, ah, you should come and become affected by the material. No, I'm talking about personal time. I know the Knesset will remember those days. When you had more time to worship and pray. When she tell you her dream, it's always accurate. <laughs> okay, people are already preaching to you. But I must is here, you know. Okay, but okay, they say you don't have time like before. You have you now count money. Okay, you do marketing. Go back to it. Listen, go back. Create more time. You see that the more, the, the more fervent your prayer life is, eh, the more accurate messages you get. You'll be shocked that God will be showing you messages eh, to people even in your area. But you know one mistake these people used to make? They now quickly go and turn themselves to become minister of the gospel. No, there is no calling of vision. The calling is just five, fivefold. The Bible says he brought men into the train. It is he that gave some to be what? Apostles. He said, then evangelists, pastors, prophets. And teachers. There is no ah so we have evangelists here. No, 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 it's, it's a gift of the Holy Spirit. It does not mean that you have a calling. And it does not mean that you should now begin to tell people, don't worry, I will see for you. You can't see what God didn't show you. Now it is why you now want to merchandise the gift. That the devil will now come in. The devil will now begin to show you things that looks like real. Now, what's the last one because of time? The last thing you must do, if you have this spectacular way, improve on holy living. Make I still told my wife this morning what God showed me last night. So this morning, my revelations are always accurate. Give more time to holiness. See, if you do these three things, eh, you will see that ha, you begin to improve in hearing God. The Spirit's message will become more clear to you. Then you will not be living your life as a blind Christian. So you don't make the mistake of who? Of Gyasi. Gyasi didn't know that the money of Naaman and the leprosy of Naaman were connected together. He didn't know. You want a photograph? Okay. Is this posture okay? <laughs> Let them take their photograph. I'm waiting. Thank you. Hallelujah. You know, your children too will serve God. I'm glad that my daughter is here taking photographs, not in the party. Not in the club. Your children will not be in the club. Your children will be in church with you. Look at daddy and daughter now. That's how it's supposed to be. In church with you. Are you blessed this morning? Have you learned something? So go and put what you have learned to work. Now in the second service, that one we know, all the members will be here. It's not workers alone. We are talking about 
how to identify the voice of the flesh. We will see that in the second service. Let's be on our feet. If you are clapping, you clap. Oju in the mommy message my evangelist. Oju in on it. Because some of you are ah mommy message. Oju in on the machine. Come and be microphone to my kid the Jesus Kakiri. Thank God for your life, man. From glory to glory. I bless you as you go into this new week. The heavens of God's blessing is open over you in Jesus' name. All you lay your hand upon this week shall prosper. I see lines falling onto you this week in pleasant places. In all your goings and coming this week, enjoy perfect divine protection. You are blessed and you are favored. In Jesus' name I pray. And don't forget we are prayer meeting every day.